what's up everybody welcome to BioS3 raw tv well tonight we're going to talk about something that the email came from jennifer last name omitted jennifer thank you for sending the email um this is something that um the protein itself i kind of knew about but it wasn't something that um let's just dive into it right so anyways jennifer sends me this email about a new study that's out and the study says corn protein q u o r n protein builds muscle better than milk protein okay so basically they're saying hey there's a protein out there that's better than milk that builds muscle faster. Matter of fact, twice as fast, right? Like 100% faster. And I said, well, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to check that out. So the first thing you guys have to know is this corn protein. Corn is the company, okay? Mycoprotein is what it's actually called. And mycoprotein, in interesting enough, where we'll talk about how it's made, where it comes from, and the things that other people are not going to tell you. But before the whole bodybuilding universe starts delving into this shit going, oh, my God, the new thing, a study says, listen to me. Get all the facts. I'll give you all the facts here. Then you can take it and fucking run with it. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. So, uh, the date was July 3rd. So, this is a super recent study. Or at least they're talking about it recently. Um, University of Exeter. Now, there's only been one study like this done. Okay? Just one in the entire world. So, take that for what it's worth. There's nothing studied saying that it's been replicated after this study. There's nothing saying that it didn't happen. There's only been one study. Okay? So... So the study from the University of Exeter was found that mycoprotein, the protein-rich food source that is unique to corn products, stimulates post-exercise muscle building to a greater extent than milk protein. The study evaluated the digestion of protein, which allows amino acids, the building blocks of protein, to increase the bloodstream and then become available for muscle protein building in 20 health ad healthy adults. So there's only 20 people that they did it with. Anyways, trained young men and the rest followed a... Uh, uh, following a bout of strenuous exercise. The young men performed the exercise were given the either milk protein or mycoprotein. Their muscle building rates were then measured using isotope labeled tracers for the following protein consumption. Animal proteins like milk are excellent source for muscle growth, blah, 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 blah. Results show that while those who ingested milk protein increased their muscle building rates by 60%, those who had mycoprotein increased their muscle growth rates by more than double this, 120% showing that mycoprotein, the main ingredient in all corn products, is a more effective source of protein to promote muscle growth. These results are very encouraging when we consider the desire of some individuals to choose non-animal derived protein sources. Well, it's basically the doctor saying, you know, this is great that we found this and stuff like this. Um, our data show that mycoprotein can stimulate muscles to grow faster in the hours following the exercise compared to a typical animal uh, protein milk. So, first of all, the first thing that I, the problem that I have with is, is they use the milk protein. They're not saying a whey protein. They're saying a milk protein. Now, all they're talking about in the study is about how this mycoprotein in the hours following the workout increased muscle protein synthesis. And they talk right about, in the beginning, about the faster digestion of it. Fucking time out, guys, okay? Maybe the regular people out there in the world don't fucking know. Might go, oh, it's better. Listen, we know that milk protein digests slower than whey protein. Milk protein digests slower than egg protein or... Soy protein, it pretty much digests the slowest, right? So you put a plant-based protein that digests very quick against a milk-based protein that digests slow and then measure within two hours. Of course the fucking other... Yes, the mycoprotein is going to spike muscle protein synthesis faster for that period of time because it's going to digest faster, get in the blood faster, and therefore that's what's going to get the results. But it's not because it's a more superior form of protein. It's because it's more digestible. If you took a whey protein concentrate or isolate or hydroslate or whatever digests fat, even an egg protein that di digests very quickly. Matter of fact, you can go even further and say, instead of protein, you could take um, whatever dose take, it's 20 grams, you could take a 20 gram scoop of just straight essential amino acids and that would even digest faster than this because it would be in the bloodstream faster and that would have better results than the fucking mycoprotein. But the way that they're setting it up, if you don't understand that, Oh, mycoprotein next day, but there's one fucking study. People are going to break this down. Trust me, I'm not going to be the only one doing this, and somebody might have already done it, but this is going to pop up later on when people start fucking going, oh, this is the best. That's the shut the fuck up. This, this, trust me, this shit's been around for a little bit. If it really was like that, people would be using it. People would be using it a lot more than they are now, but we're going to get into why a lot of people don't use it too. So um, let me X out of this. So, um, shit. Don't mess with the iPhone. So the mycoprotein, it says, uh, is a relatively new thing. It came around in the 1980s, okay? So to me, I go, new. I was born in the 70s. I'm like 40-something years old. It's been 30-something years. That's, to me, that's not necessarily new as far as, like, the bodybuilding and nutrition stuff, right? New would be, like, in the last five years for what we consider in the supplement industry something, you know, new, whatever. It said, um, British industrialists who were worried about the global food crisis, blah, 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 trial and error, they came up with the process 
of spores that are fermented in big vats with glucose as a food source. The protein is made via fungus. It is actually a fungus that you're ingesting with mycoprotein. That's how they create it. So yes, it's vegan. Yes, it's not animal protein, but it is a fungus. Now, I, I eat mushrooms all the time. I, you know, I have no problem with that. Like, it doesn't bother me one bit. But do I want to ingest the proteins made from fungus? To me, honestly, it doesn't really turn me off that much. To be honest with you, I'm like, fuck it. I've drank some of the most disgusting shit on the planet. You know, and there's some things that I wouldn't. But I'm like, if I eat mushrooms, this is much different, right? So what the fuck? Okay, hang on. So now we go from what it's made of back over here to the actual side effects. Now I want to make sure I get these right because this is coming from um, Center for Science and the Public Interest. Corn's mycoprotein linked to severe allergic reactions, gastrointestinal symptoms in new report. This was in 2018 this came out. Um, researcher analyzed self-reports of adverse reactions to the mold-based meat substitute. It is mold-based. So when they first tell you on that other website that it's fungus-based, they don't tell you that it's actually mold-based. Well, how many people out there are allergic to mold? How many people out there are allergic to penicillin? Penicillin is made from mold too. So let's say, and I'm not saying everybody that's allergic to mold and penicillin is gonna be allergic to this stuff, but there's a damn good chance that that is gonna happen like that. So it says um, basically, um, this thing actually has, this is what's crazy. It has a meat-like consistency, smells like mushroomy, like wet mushrooms, right? And the texture is kind of like, like almost like mashed potatoes to cut it through. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you couldn't picture a gro more gross thing being put in a can that bodybuilders are suddenly gonna start drinking. It's disgusting, right? Um, corn's frozen products typically take the shape of chicken, cutlets, strips, chicken strips, blah, blah, blah. Um, in 2002, alarmed by an early company study submitted by the FDA, um, adverse reactions to corn, as well as by the independent research, um, CSPI began collecting adverse reaction reports from affected consumers via the internet. Of 1,752 such reports analyzed for the study, 312 reported allergic reactions, including hives, itching, difficulty breathing, swelling to the throat, tongue, mouth, or lips. 92 or 29.5% of those people reported seeking medical attention. A total of 1,692 reported gastrointestinal reactions, such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or cramping. Some suffered both allergic and gastrointestinal reactions. An 11-year-old boy with a history of mold, allergy, and asthma um, died after corn's turkey burger allegedly triggered an asthma attack, according to the paper. Now, here's the problem. If you put a product out there, let's say you have a, a, a protein. You put the protein out there, right? And on that label, it says, if you're asthmatic, don't use it. If you're allergic to penicillin, don't use it. If you're allergic to um, any kind of fungus, don't use it. This product is made from a fungus. It's actually made from mold. Now, people understand penicillin is made from mold, but it's a drug, and it's been around forever, so it's easily acceptable, right? You can accept the fact that it's made from mold. How many people you think are gonna jump up to buy a can full of fucking mold that is supposedly gonna make them build muscle faster? Now, here's the problem that I have. Most bodybuilders, including myself back in the day, would have jumped to be first in line to buy this shit, and I would have bought 10 cases of this shit, took it home and took it for fucking months because it offered faster gains. Well, this video is to stop that shit. This video is to cut that shit right in the bud. Just nip that shit right in the bud like this. Make sure that shit does not happen because now you have all the information. It's made by a fungus. The study that was done used a slow digesting protein compared to a fast digesting. So they were not even, even remotely in that study. It was only 20 people, which is fucking bullshit. On top of that, uh, over, like, I'd say literally about 8% of the people that have tried this thing so far, judging by this report, have had adverse reactions where they wound up in the fucking hospital. And on top of that, it was 16 or 23% total that had some kind of reaction to it that just didn't feel good from it. And these people had no fucking idea that they were taking in mold. They had adverse reactions because they were allergic to it. So now you have a product that you basically have to say a certain percent of the population is fucking allergic to this. And it's not like, you know, lactose intolerance. This thing could put you in the fucking hospital real quick and it killed that kid. So be aware, guys. There's no fucking way that I see this in any way, shape, or form, being able to penetrate the supplement industry. The the food industry, I can see, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in foods and they change different words and shit on food labels. So they won't say mold, it'll be like, 
Akakius Mampapius Totosius. And you're like, what the fuck? And you're like, oh, that sounds pretty good. It must be an expensive ingredient. It's fucking mold. Like that's, they just kind of word things in a certain way. And people don't really read labels like that and even understand what the fuck is going on most times when they're reading food labels because there's so much bullshit in there that it makes you go, well, it's vegan. It's sold in health, uh, health food stores. It must be good for me. Like it's non-meat. And they're saying, fact, you're automatically putting this shit together. That type of person may be more apt to use that. When you got a bodybuilder, and they go through that label, they're going to Google those fucking things because they want to find out if that's the secret key in that fucking product that's making them grow. Because whatever they're paying for that fucking jug of protein, they're figuring if that's the fucking key, I can Google this shit, probably buy it from another supplement company as a fucking raw material and fucking blow myself up by just putting it in fucking whey protein. And I'll do the same fucking thing. Like they're smart like that, right? They want to save money and still get the gains and they'll start, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Their wheels are going to start turning. They start figuring it out. So eventually what's going to happen is they're going to go, well, this fucking thing doesn't exist as far as like a raw material in these bodybuilding companies. So what the fuck? And they're going to Google it and go, mold? What the fuck? You know what I mean? Fungus? What the fuck? Like, what, you know, they may even get to the point, like, I, I think some bodybuilders wouldn't even realize that that study from reading it was done with two different digesting proteins. But um, they'll definitely figure out the mold and the fucking fungus shit and how it's created from that. And um, I think after they're seeing that and they find out the other information about the gastrointestinal distress, like... Somebody's trying to build muscle does not want to wind up on the fucking can for four hours with diarrhea. Somebody's trying to build muscle does not want to wind up in the hospital for a day and lose a day worth of fucking training gains or recovery. You know what I mean? Like, we only have one life. We have so long to fucking train and build. And you use all that fucking time you can. You don't want to be laid up in a fucking hospital because you decided to take some fucking fungi protein. Like, what the fuck? So be aware, guys. This stuff is not, I think, ideal. You know, you want the fastest thing. You know, you want to beat something like something faster that builds muscle longer and faster than fucking whey protein. Essential amino acids. Take an essential amino acid. It's already pre-digested. It's already broken down. It's not in a food source. It's already extracted from the food and it will hit your bloodstream faster. You know, you want the next best thing? Take some whey protein. Take a scoop of whey protein. After that, you know, you're starting to split heads a little bit where you're like, you know, egg protein, I think would be probably on par roughly with you know, the whey protein, but the whey protein, the amino acid profile on it seems to build muscle better than egg protein. So you have all these other options that are really optimal and they're creating these great physiques. Don't be fooled into thinking, taking this fucking mycoprotein bullshit. It's going to turn you into fucking Phil Heath in a month because you'll be able to make twice the amount of gains. Okay. Trust me, if there was anything out out there like that, the bodybuilders would have had their hands on it fucking five years ago. We get our hands on drugs and shit that fucking, they don't even know build muscle. We figure that shit out and we're using that stuff fucking 10 years before the doctors even figure out that it's, it can build muscle. Like, you know what I mean? So if that vegan protein had come out four or five years ago, it was in the 1980s when it came out. You don't think we would have fucking known about it? Absolutely would have known about it. Matter of fact, maybe somebody did try it out back in the day and figured it out and said, fuck this and put the word out. I don't know. But the bottom line is, you know, there's always people trying to find, you know, new ways like, to create things and the body will respond to those new ways. And I applaud that. Let's find new ways. Let's find cutting edge stuff. Let's find different things that we haven't thought of already and combine them and cause synergy with different products, whatever. But making a product out of mold that a lot of people are allergic to and have adverse reactions to, and even keeping that on the market, the fact that it's still sold as a food fucking shocks the shit out of me. Unless there's some heavy disclaimer on the fucking box, which whatever. But bottom line is guys, Stick with what you're doing. You have the basics. You have the knowledge over all the people out there. Don't question yourself when you see shit like this to be like, oh, well, maybe this is better. Stop. Don't even think about it for a second. Go and just investigate the shit out of it. Research the fuck out of it. And really quickly, you're going to find the information that I just talked about, which is going to show you right off the bat that it's not that golden egg that you thought it was. And um, you're going to save yourself probably a trip to the hospital and some diarrhea. And uh, that's a good thing. Bowsychang at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But so fight. Bowsychang.com is the blog. It's save yourself from this bullshit bicep. And we are.